Hello there! Welcome back! In this video, we are going to nourish your minds with essential information to improve your mathematical skills. Be ready with your paper and pen as we share another interesting lesson in general mathematics, specifically on how to solve exponential equations. At the end of the session, you are expected to Define one-to-one -one property of exponential functions and solve exponential equations. So let's begin by defining one-to-one -one property of exponential functions. So let's open this envelope. Are you ready? Let's do this. Open. One-to-one -one property of exponential functions is if x sub 1 is not equal to x sub 2, then b base b raised to the power of x sub 1 is not equal to b, again that's the base b, raised to the power of x sub 2. Conversely, if b raised to the power of x sub 1 is equal to b raised to the power of x sub 2, then we could say that x sub 1 is equal to x sub 2. To fully understand this property of exponential functions, we are going to use this one as we solve an exponential equation. So let's proceed now to the core topic for this session, which is solving exponential equations. Let's start with this one. Let's solve this equation. 3 raised to the power of x minus 2 is equal to 81. Well, that's it. Every time you solve exponential equations, you need to write both sides of the equation as powers of the same base. Take note, same base. Now, looking at our given, you have your 3, that's your base on the left side. And on the right side, you have your 81. They don't have the same base yet because we can express 81 in 2. Yes, that would be with the base of 3 because 81 is actually 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That is 3 multiplied to itself 4 times. So we can write it as 3 raised to the power of 4. Okay, so let's continue with our solution. Let's rewrite the given, and this time, we are going to express 81 with a base of 3. So that will be 3 raised to the power of x minus 2 is equal to 3 raised to the power of 4. And there, following the tip. Now, looking at that, they already have the same base, that is 3. And from there, we are going to use one-to-one -one property of exponential functions. Here, since our base, which is 3, is raised to the power of x minus 2, and it's equal to the base of 3 raised to the power of 4, using the one-to-one -one property of exponential functions, we can say that x minus 2 is equal to 4. That would be the exponents of our given base. Now, what we are looking for is the value of our x, right? So what we can do now is to eliminate this negative 2 by using addition property of equality by adding 2 to both sides of our equation. So we can cancel now negative 2 here, and we are left with x on the left side, and we can add 4 and 2 on the right side. So we'll have x is equal to 6, and that is our answer for the first example. That is, x is equal to 6. Were you able to follow? Okay, now if not, do not worry. You can always go back to the portion of this video showing you the step-by-step -step solution on how to solve exponential equation. So let's have another example. How about this? You have 27 raised to the power of x minus 2 is equal to 9 raised to the power of x plus 1. Let's solve this one. Let's copy that. So our next step would be, let's recall the tip that was given in the first example. We need to write both sides having the same base. 27 and 9 are numbers that can be expressed in the base of what number? What do you think? That would be 
Alright, that's 3. Since 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. Well, 9 is also the product of 3 and 3, right? So we will rewrite it in this form. We have 3 cubed for 27 and 3 squared for 9. Then we copied the exponent. So that's 3 raised to the power of 3 multiplied to the given exponent, which is x minus 2 is equal to 3 squared, that's 9, multiply this time to the exponent of the given, which is x plus 1. We're able to follow. Okay, so let's move on. Now, looking at this, they already have the same base, right? So using the one-to-one -one property of exponential functions, we can say that 3 multiplied to the quantity of x minus 2 is equal to 2 multiplied to the quantity of x plus 1, Again, based on the property. And from there, we can now distribute 3 to x and 3 to negative 2. On the right side, we can distribute 2 to x and 2 to positive 1. So we have 3 times x and 3 times negative 2. On the left side, that will give us a 3x minus 6. And on the right side, that's 2 times x, that's 2x, and 2 times 1, which is positive 2. So the next step is we need to make sure that all the variables are found on the left side of our equation that would be right here and the remaining or the constants are on the right side or the other side of the equation. So we have 3x here and we also have 2x on the right side. So we need to transfer this to the left side. We can do that by applying subtraction property of equality. So we can subtract 2x to both sides of our equation so that we can cancel it here. So we are now left with 3x minus 2x will give us an x. So x minus 6 is equal to positive 2, this one. So from there, we are going to solve for x, right? But we still have negative 6 here. So to eliminate that, we will use addition property of equality by adding 6 to both sides of our equation. So we will solve now for x. x is equal to 2 plus 6 will give us an 8. So the answer for this exponential equation is positive 8. Do we share the same answer? Well, if that's a yes, hopefully that's a yes, then good job. If no, do not worry. You can review the steps that were shown in this video presentation. I know you can do it. Just take your time. Let's have one more example. Let's solve for 9 raised to the power of x squared is equal to here. You have 3 raised to the power of x plus 3. Remember the tip in our first and second example? We need to have the same base for the left and the right side of our exponential equation. Here we have 9 and 9 can be expressed as 3 times 3. That's right. So you have 3 squared for this. And this one is already in its base, which is 3. So let me copy that right here and express 9 as 3 squared like this. See, you now have 3 squared for 9. I just copied x squared and I copied the rest. And from there, observe that you already have the same base for the left and right side of your given equation. So we can use now one-to-one -one property of exponential functions. So we can say that here, 2x squared is just equal to x plus 3. There, 2 times x squared will give you a 2x squared, and I copied x plus 3. As you can see in this part of our solution, you cannot see any other similar terms, right? But we see a squared, and we have here a variable x and a constant. So what we are going to do now is to form a quadratic equation. To do that, we are going to transfer x and 3 to the left side of our equation, having 0 on the right side. So again, applying the different properties of equality. So we are going to subtract first x to both sides to transfer x from the right, moving it to the left side. So we have now this one. That's 2x squared minus x, and we are left with 3 on the right side of the equation. So again, we need to transfer this. And to do that, we are going to subtract 3 to both sides of our equation. So we have this. Cancel 3, so we have 2x squared minus x minus 3 is equal to 0. That will now be our trinomial. 
Wow, we already have the factors here. Now, how did we come up with these factors? Let's have a very short trip or a view on your grade 8 mathematics for factoring. So let me take out this trinomial, 2x squared minus x minus 3, and let's try to have a recall on how to solve or find its factors. So here, your first step is you need to draw an x across like this one, what you see on the screen, similar to that. And then we are going to identify A, B, and C of your given trinomial. So the A here is this one, that's 2. B is negative 1, and C is negative 3, like this. Now, our next step is we are going to... There, you're going to get the product of A and C and place it right here. So you have 2 as your A and negative 3 for your C. And then you will copy B and place it there. That's negative 1. So let's multiply 2 and negative 3. That will give us a... That's a negative 6. So your next task is you will find the factors of negative 6 whose sum is negative 1. Are you able to follow? Again, you're going to find the factors of this, that's negative 6, whose sum is negative 1, and place your answers here in the circles. Now, let's have a table showing the factors of negative 6, like this. So, what are the factors of negative 6? You have negative 6 and positive 1. You have 6 and negative 1. You also have negative 3 and 2. And another factor is 3 and negative 2, right? Now, let's add these factors. So, we have negative 6 plus 1 will give us a negative 5. And the second one, we have positive 5. We have your negative 1. And the last one is a positive 1. Again, we are going to find factors of negative 6 whose sum is negative 1. So among the factors, we have negative 3 and 2, which will give us the sum of a negative 1. So we are going to copy those factors and place it here. Like that. Now since our A is 2, it's greater than 1, what we need to do is to have an extra step. That will be dividing our factors negative 3 and 2 by the value of A, like this. Take note, that will be our last step before we proceed and identify our factors. Okay, so dividing it by 2 because that will be our, the value of our A. Next, 2 divided by 2 can be simplified and the answer for that will be 1, like this. However, negative, negative 3 over 2 is as is. Now, to write our factors, we'll start with this one. Since we already have 1, we have to write first the variable x, then have here plus 1, because here the sign of 1 is positive. That's why you have your x plus 1. On the other side, you need to follow bottoms up, meaning you'll start from the bottom going up. So here you'll start with 2, then copy the variable x, then minus 3. That's why you have 2x minus 3. So the factors of this trinomial is now 2x minus 3 and x plus 1. Going back, I hope it's clear now how we come up with these factors. So going back, we are going to equate the factors to 0. So you have 2x minus 3 is equal to 0 and x plus 1 is equal to 0. Let's solve for this one first. We will add 3 to both sides, so we'll have 2x is equal to 3. Since we are looking for x and it's still 2x, we need to divide both sides by, correct, that would be by 2. To cancel out 2 because we are looking for x and the value of x here is 3 over 2. You can also write it as 1 and 1 half or 1.5. Another one. How about on the other side? x plus 1 is equal to 0. To find x, we are going to subtract 1 to both sides. So we are left with x is equal to negative 1. So these are our answers. So for this exponential equation, we have two answers. We have x is equal to 3 over 2, and the other one is negative 1. Do we have the same answer? Now, do you understand? I hope your answer for that is a yes. If not, again, do not worry. You can just revisit the portion of the video that you find difficult until you attain mastery. Okay? 
That's a deal. Now, if this is our last example, then that means it's time for our activity. It's activity time. I prepared here a five-item assessment for you to work on. The instruction for this activity is you're going to find the value of the variable that would make each equation true. Solve for the value of x in these given exponential equations. Take your time. Pause the video. Check your answer for this activity for this video presentation. Do not forget to check our description box just below this video presentation and confirm if your answer is correct. Alright, so that's it. That concludes our lesson for today about solving exponential equations. Great job for today, as always, and see you in the next lesson.